Hello guys, today's video will be an example of how many ways are there to do something in Laravel or in web development in general or in coding in general. So for example, you have a table, let's call it transactions, and you need to automatically fill the table on the insertions of the record with created by ID. So who created the record for some kind of multi-tenancy or just for login purposes. And there are so many ways how you can do that. Let's explore those ways. And spoiler alert, there's no right or wrong. It's just personal preference. But maybe you will find out a different way and maybe you will change how you do it. So let's start with a very simple example. So you have a transaction controller with a store method. And in here with the request validated, you need to add that created by ID, which will come from your auth ID, right? So the most simple way to do that is this is an array and you need to add another key and value pair to that array. So you do plus user ID equals auth ID. Or in fact, the field name is not user ID is created by ID. Let's close the sidebar so you would see that. See, this is probably the most simple way how you can add any field to the store to the create method. But what if you want to make it hidden from controller like a separation of concern? So some kind of automation for adding created by ID elsewhere. So you delete created by ID from here, you leave it as request validated, and then you create an observer class, something like this transaction observer. And on creating of transaction, you add if auth check. So if user is logged in, because you never know who would create the transaction, it may happen from artisan command in the future or something. So you add created by ID with auth ID. Great. And then in your app service provider, you add transaction observe by that observer class. And that would totally work as well. So we can try it actually visually Add transaction amount one, two, three, something, something we save. And in the database, we refresh the page and created by ID is saved automatically. Another place that you can hide that logic is the model itself. So option number three is in your model in the transaction model, you could have a boot method. So after calling parent boot of the model class of the Laravel framework, then you can do whatever. So we're basically doing almost the same thing as the observer just creating, we're catching the creating event or creating function and add the created by ID here. And then you don't need to separate that into some kind of observer or something, the model takes care of itself. And this is kind of a logical way. I don't prefer one or another in this video, I will just show different ways. It's your choice how to use it. But in my opinion, it's quite logical that the model is responsible for its data. And then final option, final way is for those cases where you want to have something like this, but for multiple models. So for example, you want transaction to be with created by ID and then some task, then some project. So all those tables would create the same field and should contain that logic. So how to make it without copy pasting the boot method into various models, you can use a trait. So we do that inside of our quick admin panel actually. And this code is from there from the generated code. So use multi tenant model trait, that trait, it's actually quite complicated, but I will show you the main part here. This is the main line. So we're doing basically the same thing, assigning created by ID, there's also a check if it's admin or not, that is irrelevant for your project, probably. And there's also a check how to get the data by that created by ID. So it's a trait for multi tenancy. And I will actually link in the description below another video where I discuss this in detail. But the main thing what you need to know how to assign that trait to be called as boot method of the model because the method is called boot. And this is not a boot method. So how is it called? There's kind of a magic thing in Laravel, which is not mentioned in the latest version of the documentation for some reason. So if you want to have a trait with boot method called, all you need to do is to name your method in the trait boot, and then the name of the trait. So boot, and then multi tenant model trait, the same as this one. And then that method would be called automatically as boot method of every model where that trait is used like this. So it may sound complicated, but it's totally useful for those cases where you need to assign that created by ID or any field for multiple models. And speaking of multi tenancy, I will also mention kind of an advertisement for our quick admin panel, which uh, partially built that code. So you can create the transaction CRUD or any CRUD. And there's use multi tenancy checkbox, which comes from the module called multi tenancy. Let's leave that form. So multi tenancy is the module and this contain that trait that I've shown in this video. 
So if you want to generate admin panel with multi-tenancy, check out our quickadminpanel.com. And if you want more videos like this one, quick tips, subscribe to the channel and also comment below if you have any more ways how to automatically set up the fields. Maybe you have some way that I didn't mention in this video. And see you guys in other videos.